Larry, uh, just talk about this experience of going to China and just, uh, this is more than basketball, isn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity, you know, whenever you can, you can uh, use the, the sport to see parts of the world. Uh, I've been really lucky as a player back in college, participating in some U.S. teams and, and I never dreamed that you'd be, you know, using a passport and a visa and traveling around because of a of the great game. So it's it's a special thing, I think, particularly for the players, um, you know, create some friendships and some bonds, uh, be able to, you know, to have a number of practices where we can play four games. If I'm not maybe three games, I think there's a few logistical things still being worked out. But, um, you know, go to the other side of the world and, and some of those experience, I think, are lifetime memories for everybody. And we can, you know, represent ourselves individually, uh, our, our universities, and then obviously the Pac-12, um, you know, and try to, to have a great time and, and create a lot of good memories. What did it mean to, to be selected as the Pac-12 head coach for this all-star team? Well, you know, I'm not exactly sure what the, what the process was. Craig Robinson was originally slated for it, and then obviously, you know, uh, lost his job, and so needed to come up with somebody else. And um, it worked out really well. I don't know what the, the criteria uh, was that existed, but we were in a situation with the new facility, the practice facility being built and the Huntsman being down, that we were really limited this summer with what we could do basketball camp-wise. And that's always a big two-week, three-week chunk just of, of camps and then a lot of planning. So I'm not sure you'd be really excited about tackling it in a normal year with the the month of July recruiting and a bunch of camps and there's got to be some built-in time for our staff but I thought if the timing was perfect for us um, without having the camps and uh, it worked out well for us academically the trip being in August there's some schools that are you know still in summer school going to summer school so it didn't fit their schedules but I just know uh, it's perfect I uh, never would have dreamed we'd have a chance to do it. We can bring our staff in its entirety and uh, and obviously three players. So it's there's great benefit for us, I think, to get together as a staff. And it's kind of like a coaching clinic in the summertime that forces you to be visiting about basketball. And we'll you know be able to implement a few things in this team. But there'll be plenty of meetings that where maybe we can start sharpening the saw a little bit and thinking about some things when otherwise we wouldn't be. Uh, Coach, some of us just got back from Pac-12 football media days that was held in Hollywood, and now you get to take a traveling all-star team, you know, internationally. Does this just kind of slam home that point that the Pac-12 means business and to tangle with any other conference in the country as far as respectability and, and quality? Well, they're, they're sure doing things right, you know. Um, but I, I looked at the, the, N, the NBA draft again this year, and you go, you're watching it, you know, pick by pick. We've obviously got a number of players from our league, but uh, sometimes perhaps you don't get the notoriety uh, nationally, different time zone. Um, you know, I don't know what other factors might come into play, but TV has a lot to do with it and the perception that a lot of population is on the other side of the country. Um, and even when I was coaching in the Big Sky and in the NBA, I used to get a kick out of how the Pac-10 a lot of times didn't get some of the credit it deserved, but yet there'd be you know three, four teams in the Sweet 16, and te you know. But after this draft it was interesting. There was no other league in the country that had more people drafted than the Pac-12. I think we were at nine out of the 60 p players picked. There were some at eight, but it, that kind of it's like wait a minute, you know. Um, Number one, our teams have done pretty well, six NCAA teams last year. But to think that the experts, the professional scouts, are identifying basically one out of six players that they're going to draft came from our league, I think speaks volumes too, is that we've got a pretty good brand of basketball with some, with some high caliber talent. So it's fun to be a part of. Um, from a coaching perspective, it's a lot of fun to be a part of. I think our players, I think players want to be in a league 
uh, such as this. I know you guys are probably getting a little more kick out of being involved with the league and getting to go to the football, you know, all that kind of stuff that you go, wait, I didn't get to do this at my last job. So um, it's fun, but along with that comes some responsibility and, and, you know, it's a little bit higher standard. More people are watching what it is you're going to talk about. More people are watching the product we put on the floor. And I think everybody at the end of the day wants to be at, at a high level. So it's, uh, as I said, it's fun to be a part of. Uh, so Georgetown, when they were traveling a couple years ago, had a bit of an incident in China, um, if I'm recalling correctly. I mean, what do you tell these players to make sure, you know, they're kind of doing right and, and that they're kind of representing the Pac-12 and the, the country in the right way? Well, I mean, we had some incidents in Brazil two years ago when we took our foreign trip. And, and the reality is it's, it's like if you're a good AAU player, and if you've got four or five stars behind your name, every time you're playing a game in the summer, you better be pretty good because there's probably going to be a pretty tough kid that's guarding you. That want, I mean, that's what this is all about. You know, you get a chance to play an elite player in AAU, uh, you're probably going to take a pretty good shot from the other team. When the reality of international basketball right now is the United States is still at the top of the list. Countries are closing fast, but there's no... It's like nobody would argue that Germany and Brazil are two of the top soccer programs. You know, it's it's okay to say that. And when you play Brazil, when you play China, when you play these other places, they want to get a piece of you because that's the the standard I think that they're trying to live up to. And so that it's going to be a little bit more challenging. You be, you need to be under control, uh, keep your emotions in check, and. Um, Getting back to my previous answer, I think if you're playing really hard and understanding that, that, uh, you know, we're not the favorite in a situation like that, and and you need to be ready for the other team's best punch, and and sometimes it's literal. You know, it's there's going to be some contact, and, and we've got to be able to keep our composure and focus on what we're doing.